This video is one of a series that we've made on the subject of circuit protection in association with Schneider Electric. They can be viewed individually, or you can click the link in the description below to view them as part of a free online training package to help you with your CPD and receive a certificate to prove you've completed the course. If you're already watching this as part of the CPD package, then we'll crack on. In this video, we turn our attention to what is probably the newest device in this series, at least to viewers in the UK, the Arc Fault Detection Device, or AFDD. So what is an AFDD and what does it do? Well, to answer that question, we need to think about the kind of fault that it's protecting against. We've covered most major fault types when discussing MCBs, RCDs and SPDs. However, there's one more fault that can cause us problems, and that's an Arc Fault. This type of fault can occur when a loose connection starts to cause carbonization of the insulation surrounding the conductor. If the combination of circumstances is correct, or incorrect depending on your point of view, the loose conductor and the carbonized insulation can lead to electricity jumping the gap in the loose terminal in the form of an arc. This arc is another way that an electrical connection can lead to a fire causing severe damage. Because the arc is not causing a large amount of current to flow for a long time and isn't leaking to earth or causing a surge in the electrical supply, none of the protective devices that we've mentioned so far will detect or disconnect the circuit with the arc fault on it. So to prevent this type of fault from becoming a huge problem and leading to fires breaking out, we turn to the AFDD. Now this technology has been around for some time in the form of the Arc Fault Circuit Interrupter, or AFCI, but in the second amendment to the 18th edition of BS7671, it finally became a requirement to install them in certain situations in UK installation work. So what are they doing to offer protection against Arc Faults? Well, the protective component in an AFDD is a little different to previously considered types of protective device. When an arc fault occurs, it creates an instability in the current waveform of the circuit and turns it from looking all nice and smooth into a jagged mess as the current shoots up and down to create and maintain the arc. Now, while this messy waveform may look totally random, it actually forms a fairly predictable shape like a signature in the flow of current that can be identified by software as the creation of an arc in a circuit. And that really is the key to how an AFDD works. Inside the device there, there is a circuit board that is loaded with software that monitors how the shape of the current waveform is behaving. Then, when it sees a distorted waveform that matches the known signature of an arc being formed, it sends a signal to the mechanical tripping system inside the device to disconnect the circuit. Now, if you've been around electrical installation for some time, you'll know that some pieces of kit will generate a tiny spark when operated. Maybe a light switch feeding an old inductive load or the brushes on a motor as it spins round. So will these sparks cause the AFDDs to trip? Well, no, because in these and other examples, we're seeing the generation of naturally occurring sparks, not arcs, and the monitoring software inside the AFDD is programmed to recognize this and not responding correctly by operating when these sparks appear. So far, so very clever. But you may be wondering how many protective devices you'll need protecting a single circuit. For instance, an MCB for overcurrent protection, an RCD for additional protection, and now in some cases, an AFDD for arc fault protection. Well, the definition of an AFDD helps us to understand our options here. In BS 7671, it's described as, a device intended to mitigate the effects of arcing faults by disconnecting the circuit when an arc fault is detected. So that's stating the obvious that we already know. But it then goes on to say in the note that such devices include, one, a single device having opening means able to open the protected circuit in specified conditions, or two, a single device with an integrated protective device, or three, a separate unit assembled on site with a declared protective device. So indent two there seems to be hinting at the fact that you could get a device offering more than just arc fault protection by itself. And this is borne out in the rest of the note. The integrated protective device two or the declared protective device three for assembly on site is either a circuit breaker in accordance with BSEN 60898-1 or an RCD in accordance with BSEN 61008-1, BSEN 61009-1 or BSEN 62423. Now, an RCD that complies with BSEN 61009-1 is actually an RCBO and therefore includes overcurrent protection as well as residual current detection. So this definition is suggesting that if you can find a device that combines all three of these protections into one product, then it can be used. 
And the good news is that they do indeed exist in various guises. For example, this one here from Schneider Electric is a combined MCB, RCD, and AFDD all in one unit. So where should we be installing these? Well, regulation 421.1.7 states that arc fault detection devices, AFDD, conforming to BSEN 62606, shall be provided for single phase AC final circuits supplying socket outlets with a rated current not exceeding 32 amps in higher risk residential buildings, houses of multiple occupation, purpose built student accommodation, and care homes. So if you're installing circuit protection to these types of properties, then you must provide AFDD protection to any single phase circuits supplying socket outlets up to and including 32 amps in value. So because the standard BS1363 socket outlet is rated at 13 amps, then the circuits feeding them must have AFDD protection in those environments. So do socket circuits in other environments need AFDDs? Well, the regulation continues, for all of the premises, the use of AFDDs conforming to BSEN 62606 is recommended for single phase AC final circuits supplying socket outlets not exceeding 32 amps. Now, that word recommended isn't like recommending a film to a friend. According to the guidance on the language used within BS 7671 found on page 18 of that book, recommended means that you should do it. And goes on to state that the word recommend is an expression in the content of a document conveying that among several possibilities, one is recommended as particularly suitable without mentioning or excluding others. So you have to do something to mitigate against the hazard of arc faults. And the writers of BS7671 say that this is the best option. So you're putting yourself in a tricky situation if you don't use AFDDs on socket circuits. So there we go. Over the course of this series, we've considered the four main types of circuit protection found in electrical installations in the UK, namely miniature circuit breakers or MCBs, residual current devices or RCDs, surge protection devices or SPDs and arc fault detection devices or AFDDs. If you're watching on YouTube, you're probably wondering why we've got these double stacked consumer units. For the answer, watch this video right here. And if you're watching as part of a free training package, then to complete this CPD module and receive your certificate, please continue on to answer the multiple choice questions. All that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.